homeboy real quick, man. I got to add my homeboy. Hold on, man, real quick. Hold up. got to add my homeboy. Bro, can you hear me? One second, one second. One second, y'all. One second, y'all. Uh, what we got going? Say, yo. Hey, yo, uh, Mike. Can you hear me, bro? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, AG. What's up, man? Hold on, bro. Let me uh let, let me pull this up real quick. Yeah, hold on. No, I need to pull this up. Without that. Okay. Yeah, hold on, man. Can you can you hear me right now? Yeah, I'm confused. Is this for like a record recorded podcast? This is this, this, a live this is live on community right now, bro. Oh shit! So I gotta watch what I say. No, nah, you ain't gotta watch what you say, man. You do your thing, man. I'm about to be dead. I'm about to be dead in like in like in like a week or two anyway. So I don't give a fuck what I say. Oh shit! Hey, that's hey. dark. That's dark. Hey, let me shout to you, though, man. Shout to you, bro. Let me tell you something, bro. I seen I seen that video, bro, of what you said, and that shit really touched a nigga. You feel me? I was Which like, video? damn, the one um Trader Truth had posted up. And then uh, that, and then I went to your page and I said, damn, he already followed me. I said, he already followed me and shit. And that's why I tapped in. Bro, I bro, I ain't know, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what you were saying though, bro, it 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 made it made me like, you know what I'm saying, want to work harder, bro, and you know what I'm saying, live life to the fullest and shit Where'd like you that. See it? Um Where'd you see it? two days ago. Oh, okay. I mean, but like, where? Like, what? What? Um, what? What? What platform? Like, how'd you see it? Like, it's like, was it? Oh, it was on. Instagram? It was on. I went to Trade the Truth's Instagram and I watched. I watched the so video. Straight. Yeah, and I went so to. Straight. Yeah, and I went to your page and I seen that you followed me and I was like, I was like, what the fuck? And then I just went down your page and I started watching all the videos and just you know the process and listening to everything you were saying. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yeah, but I was, bro. Um, yeah, bro. Like I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a real. Like if you go back and first of all, people don't know. Uh, Ad, I was a podcaster right when, right when I hate to bring him up, but right around. It's the time all good, Adam bro. Do your stuff, thing. Stuff, right? And um, I and 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 I was starting and around the same time as Adam, and um, they I, I had heard from YouTube that if you have ten thousand subscribers. In one year, you're bound to be a successful YouTuber, right? Bro, I had 13,000 in six months. Mm. I did a L.A. Capone documentary that did a million views. I interviewed Sean Cotton, Zach TV. Mm. I in, I interviewed, uh, man, I interviewed uh, Vic Mensa. I interviewed Sarah the Kid. I moved, I, 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 I interviewed, um, Man, I'm 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 missed I'm missing out I, I, all the Houston legends, Lil Flip, you know, um, man, fucking everybody. I don't I don't interview. Uh, and I know I'm forgetting big names, but I interviewed a lot of people, bro. Like on my podcast, and I did a lot of the Chicago interviews. Like I interviewed Tay Six Hundred. Mm. I interviewed uh, before all this shit. Before Tay, I interviewed Tay. I interviewed. Um, I interviewed. Mama Capone, which is Ellie Capone's mama, she did the documentary with me, and 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 she, you know, she she was instrumental in that documentary happening. And give me one second, bro. I gotta get a pillow real quick for my elbow. No problem. But yeah, no. Nah. So so I, that was like I had a podcast, bro, and I was doing so well. And right now, man, I I'd be a multimillionaire. And to be honest with you, bro, that's my only regret in life. Um, was not getting back to it, and I was just about to get back to it when all this shit happened. Where it was like, yeah, this is this is not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna have the time to do this, brother. And um, that's my only regret in life, bro, because I love interviewing, I love music, I love all of that shit, but I also love lost love for the game because everything is shoot 'em up, shoot 'em up, shoot 'em up, gang bang, shoot 'em up, shoot 'em up, mm -hmm. even back then. And I just don't, I, I didn't grow up on murder music. I grew up on hip hop music. You know what I mean? Right, and right, um, right. I, I started, I started, I started realizing like, I'm not like Sean Cotton and, 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 and these other guys where YouTube is their only stream of income. And um, 
with the anxiety of my other businesses, plus the anxiety of my health and the anxiety of my dad's health at the time he just got cancer mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of other shit, man, just being young. I, I left doing interviews and now, you know, I left doing interviews, but I threw like four concerts in Houston. One of them, uh, Stunner for Vegas, even talked about it on Vlad. Um, I, I brought Stunner for Vegas to the city. I bought uh, Key Glock. I brought, mm. uh, man, I brought, I did a Tisa Korean show with T uh, Tisa Korean and Young Deji. They from they from down here. I don't know if y'all know about. Yeah, him Deji yet. signed the wheels, but, right? It's my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did. So we did all that. We 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 booked. So we booked all of them. And I have a um. Now I own. Now I own multiple pieces of real estate. I own two pieces of commercial real estate. I own um. I own three three con two condos, a house, um, and um. And then I own um, a barbershop, and then, and then, and 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 I just been a businessman, man. I just been hustling, 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 ever since I left YouTube. But, but I had a dream to come back to YouTube. But it's all good, man. It's all good. It, it, it ain't, it ain't no, no. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a regret of mine. It's a regret of mine, and it is what it is. You gotta live with them sometimes, but. Hey man, I think I did pretty good. I think I turned out all right. I think I think things went pretty well for me. I think leaving my 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 niece and nephew, my niece on my arm, my nephew on my arm, um, leaving them generational wealth, leaving them two two properties, you know, that are like you know valued valued very high. Mm. Okay, I got other condos that are valued very high so they're gonna be they're gonna be rich 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 kids they're gonna be trust fund babies um and so that that's that's what i did all this for and that's what now gives me peace is that regardless of my my regrets my little babies are gonna have generational wealth and have the ability to do whatever they want in life whether they want to sell everything I give them and start their own business, whether they want to take it and run and become a, a real estate mogul, whatever they want, they can do. And I set that up for them. And that's what gives me, that's what gives me my, my, my peace that at 34, I was able to provide that for them. Man, that's, man. that's, that's, that's real, that's real talk, man. bro. Man, it's... <clears throat> Bro, even like watching your videos and shit like that, I was just wondering. I was like, "How are you able to be so, so strong and you know what I'm saying, so positive yeah. about everything?" You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. you like, yeah. I got, yeah. I got two, three weeks oh, oh, here. Uh, Eighty, hold on one second. Hey, yo, no problem. Tell, 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 tell mom, tell my parents, whoever. Oh, hey, bro, bro, plug. Watch it on the yeah. Daily Channel. They watching it. I'm telling my boys, go watch the interview. It's on the community YouTube channel. Yes, right now. And then, you, hey, tell them, tell them yeah. your, tell them your full name so everybody will know. My full name is Kanal Karana, and my Instagram is Kanal AFTC, and AFTC is all for the culture. I wish I had my all for the culture chain, but I just gave it to my little bro, who's my business partner. But man. All for the culture is the reason I named my 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 company that name, because a lot of people want to look at me and think I'm a culture vulture. Okay, 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 fine. Now we gonna have a debate. We are gonna ask you, what have you done? And that's what I always do. I say, what have you done when you're questioning me? And I say, have you tutored young black men and young and young and young Hispanic men fresh out of? fresh out of prison that want to get their GED. Have you ever, have you ever, um, have you ever sat down and give them the time to tutor them? Most of them were, most of them were people that look like us, Latinos, African-American. I'm Indian, African-American. There's some white people, few, but hey, hey, did you go on a, on a 14 school tour talking to kids? And every single time they were like, "You want to talk? At, you want to talk at this school?" Nah, I don't want to talk to them. They they got hope. They 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 parents got money. They 
they don't need me. They don't they don't need my hope. I, they, I need to go to the place where, where there's no hope because I know what it feels like to have no hope. Mm. So I have to go to where, if, to where people feel like they got no hope. So when, before people could ever say, you know, he's a culture vulture calling his company all for the culture, it's because I'm really doing it all for the culture, A.D., I'm one of those people that's going to tell that line, A.D., for this culture. I put that on my mama. I'm going to tell that line. Yeah, man. Listen, I respect everything you got going, bro. Because like I said, your message is powerful, man. I'm like, damn. Bro is sitting here. He, he talking. And, I, and, and every single day, you're putting out content. You know what I'm saying? Still. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. That, is, yeah. That, is that what, uh, is that what's keeping your spirits up at this time right now? Um, the videos, no, I mean, look, I've been doing the videos for a while and I got on, um, I got on TikTok and I had like 80K and, um, hold on. I, I got on TikTok and I had 80K. I told you, can you just leave it there and uh, leave, no, leave it here and just don't open it. Don't close it. Don't close it anymore, please. And then, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? No, I said. Oh, does it? Oh, does it give me? Oh, does it give me? I'm sorry, I'm on a lot of medication. It's all good, um, bro. No, nah, man, it's just about my purpose and using my life to show people that you can do whatever you want to do. The the videos are, are 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 less about me and more about people that I want to help. You know what I mean? Because these are just things I tell myself on the daily. But I'm like, let me start telling other people that are going through what I'm going through. And my TikTok just started to go crazy, um, you know, a couple years ago when I first opened the barbershop, man. And I had to open that barbershop in, in the pandemic. And that was, I opened the barbershop after the, pan, after the pandemic slowed down. I was supposed to open it. I was supposed to open it in March. Ended up opening in July. Lost my father three years later, uh, three months mm -hmm. later, who's my business partner. We go 50-50. He was handling the accounting and stock, uh, uh, accounting and, and, and all of that stuff, man. And, and even with that, I didn't, I didn't cry. I didn't, I didn't try to get out of nothing. And then my, my foot started falling off and I had to amputate my leg because mm -hmm. of this disease that's killing me now called calciphylaxis. Mm. And this and this disease that I got right now, bro. This problem that I got right now, bro, is something that you wouldn't wish on 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 your worst enemy, bro. I'm talking about some somebody kill your mama, bro. Like you don't even want them to deal with the pain that this thing causes you, bro. It's yeah. bad. It, the pain with calciphylaxis gets bad, and now finally they got me doped up. But man, I'm telling you, when I say I've been through probably the most painful diseases known to man, you can believe that. Mm. Trust me, you can believe that. And you can see it on my story. And you can see it on my Instagram. Mm. If you got the stomach, if you got the stomach for it. Mm. So what what you know? what is uh the what is the disease and like how do you get it? All right. So basically when you're on dialysis. So basically, let me just tell y'all one thing, first of all. Growing up, I'm, I'm going to give y'all a quick version. Growing up, I was a soccer star. I never had health problems. They thought I was going to play professional soccer. I had a state championship at, in the fifth grade, playing two years older than me. So I thought I was going to be a star. I ended up having kidney problems. Then I lost my kidneys completely, right? I lost my kidneys completely. I had one transplant that died within a year and a half. Mm. And then I had another, they, they, they said, okay, this disease is always going to come back and kill your disease no matter what. No, I mean, your kidney no matter what. So, so I, uh, I do a, I, I, I do a, um, I have an MRI to get me fitted for a dialysis catheter because now I have to go back on dialysis because my kidneys are not working, right? Well, during that MRI, I was given a contrast called gadolinium. It's a contrast that they know now not to give to people without kidneys. But Damn. back then, the companies, GE Healthcare and all them, hid it 
and 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 you know acted like I mean look we found out shit that we could never prove the shit that we could prove we took them to court but I'm just saying that like I'm just saying that like they 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 did some horrible shit they 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 the doctors told us in John Hopkins the best the best surgery spot in the country the best hospital in the country said when did you get your uh drug i said 2000 and whatever they go oh no your doctor's lying to you she knew too everybody knew by then and literally three months later it was announced don't give it to people without kidneys three months Hmm. later after i got it and it put me in a wheelchair for life over time because i was walking messed up with walkers and things like that and i walked with a walker and i fell over and broke my hip and i didn't know because I was being prescribed fentanyl by my doctors because I needed that much of a strong pain because that gadolinium had caused so much pain in my body and so many little little bumps all over my body that um, you know I, I needed fentanyl. So I eventually got off fentanyl eight years later. But I say all that to say, so I, I had that company do that. The doctor said, if you don't get a transplant, you're gonna die. We did some things to get some transplants. I'm all I'm gonna say is I'm from India. Use your imagination, okay? <laughs> we did some things to get some transplants. All right. And um and, and I think statute of limitations is up anyway. So anyway. So um what I'm what, what and then so I had that and um uh then uh I I, I I had my I had my second tra- I had my second transplant in 2010 or something, bro. I had my second transplant and shit just kept getting worse cuz they kept trying to fix my legs and it kept making it worse and eventually, bro. So the disease I have now, bro, is something called calciphylaxis and it's something that anybody on dialysis should be very afraid of. Okay? It's been my greatest fear for the last 13 years. Because what it is, is it's in, when you're on dialysis, your kidneys do not, um, your kidneys do not filter out all of your, they, they, without your kidneys, you don't filter out toxins. And you need, you need to, um, I'm sorry, where were you? Um, you said without your kidneys, you can't. Yeah, so basically toxins. you got. You, as a dialysis patient, you got calcium, you got free flowing calcium throwing flowing through your body, and for me, I had pair, I had different hormones in my body um, that were just acting enraged, like they were like basically the number of the hormone should have been like, say like something like twelve, and it was like three hundred, so it was way higher, and so that also pulled out calcium from my bones and deposited it everywhere. So basically there's no, I don't have any blood flow. I don't have good blood flow at all. And so whenever I start, like the way it started was I got a big wound on my foot and it turned black. They thought it was gangrene. I was in the middle of the barbershop. I had to run to the hospital. They said, no, we got to test this. It ended up being calciphylaxis, my greatest fear. Well, they ended up they ended up um, having to amputate toe by toe. One toe went back to the shop the next day and started working. Second toe, about a couple months later, nope, uh, went back to the shop, started working right away. It went to the point where they they did three toes and they said, okay, we got to do we got to take you in the hospital. We got to do half the foot. And if in two, if in five days we don't see healing, we're going to go above the knee amputation. Mm. And what it is, it's because it's because there is calcium now that has blocked the veins, that has blocked the blood flow through the veins, the capillaries, everything is, everything is calcified. My veins, my arteries, my my, I mean, just everything. My veins, my capillaries, my, my what are what are the body parts are there? Um, cells, 
everything is calcified. So they cannot, so when you have, when you have a cut, blood rushes there to heal it. I, I don't have that. It's just calcium full in, full in the blood and it turns black and then it's an open wound. So it started with my leg. We ended up amputating half my foot and the doctor said, look, it's not healing. You have five days or no, three, four days to decide. Do you want to amputate or do you want to go to the hospice and die now? Dang. And I, and I, and, and I gotta be honest. I was on the, I was on the, um, I was on the hospice side until I thought about my, my niece and nephew, but then, um, I was still on the side of hospice until, you know, my mother one day just blurted out because my family told me this is going to be your decision. We're going to let you do whatever you want. Okay. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to let you, cause you fought hard. You've been fighting since 2003. It's on you. You make the decision. No one's going to look down on you. And one day, my mother, one night, my mother was weeping and she just yelled out, don't leave me. She just lost her husband in 2020. This was 2022. She had lost both her parents in 2019. When she lost my dad, we also lost my grandmother, his mom, six days before. So we had lost a lot. And so she said, please don't leave me. And that was it. That was, I ain't, ain't no, ain't no decision to be made at that point. Ain't no decision to be made. Mama said, don't leave me. I ain't leaving. So I went through the pain of the amputation. The amputation also turned black. They had to redo it a little bit and it worked. Then my arm, I had to put in a dialysis like fistula, it's called a fistula. It's how they do dialysis. They put one in my arm and um, you know, uh, the surgery ended up not healing and it turned black and calciphylaxis was back. So luckily we didn't have to amputate that arm. It was a very light, mild case and we were able to fix it. But then right after that healed, I got it in my, in my same stump that we already had amputated. My leg amputation, it came back to that same leg. <laughs> And that's when I knew I was going to die because I knew that all the other times that I had calciphylaxis, the wound has been created by someone doing surgery or me, me putting a cut in my skin on my foot. It all started from an actual cut. Whereas these two that had happened, they made their own own blisters first which meant that the disease was so intense in there that it wasn't waiting for a wound it was going to make one so it basically it basically made its own wound and it made these blisters and these blisters turned black one by one and one by one that was when the doctors were like man there's nothing you can do it's eating, it's, there's so much dead skin around it that it's eating the dead skin. And, and you, the wound is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually you're going to get an infection and you're going to die. And I didn't want to die like that. And, 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 you know, um, I know people say, pray, pray, bro. I, I, I fought, I fought, I prayed. I don't even want to think, oh, he, he gave up. No, let me tell y'all something, bro. I fought till the last second you can fight. I really did. I, it, it came to the point where my own mother, the one who said, don't leave me, said, this is the very last surgery they're gonna, this is gonna be the very last time they're gonna, uh, it's called debriding. It means they're gonna like take that small wound and cut it all the way until they get to the very good skin. So it makes a big crater in your, in your stump. And my mom came to me and said, Canal, are you sure you want to do that? The woman who at first said, don't leave me, was like, are you sure? Because one, this painful, this pain over there was worse than all of these other times I've had it. Because it was two of them. It was on the same stump. And it was, um, 
and it was a it was a uh uh how should i say like it was connected the blisters were connected they were growing bigger and the pain was just intense because um you know we had our, it, it, it the the disease was already prevalent in there bro Hello? I'm listening. Okay, yeah, no. So, I mean, that's kind of what that disease is, bro. And, like, I'm sorry that, like, you know, I'm sorry if some of your listeners are, are having a hard time keeping along. I'm on a lot of medication, nah, it's, man. man it's, all, it's all good, bro. They got me on Xanax and painkillers and all type of stuff. I can't even get out to smoke a blunt, which I'm about to try to do right now. <laughs> I need a blunt, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I smoked a blunt like a couple days ago, but and I need me some of that good, bro. And I, <laughs> and as soon as I got out of the hospital, that's the first thing I did. I went and bought the best weed you could find in Houston. And that was from up up, up where you're from, Cali. Come on. You know Jungle Boys, right? Everybody, hell yeah. yeah. I got some Jungle Boys from in Houston, and and I just smoked, been smoking, and, and trying to enjoy the rest of my life, man. Just, you know, giving out gifts, uh, you know. You know, just 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 taking care of my people before before I leave, bro. You know. Yeah, man. <clears throat> hey, man. Like I said before, bro. You know, nigga, appreciate you, appreciate your message and shit like that, bro. And I, uh, I thank you for taking out the time to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? That means a yeah. lot. Did you follow me? Yeah, of course, of course. Mm. I'm sorry, you might have said that before, but I don't yeah. know if I heard you. No, that's all good, bro. Promise you, man. Hey, man, look, I, I appreciate you bringing me on tonight. I watch, I watch the community, so I know there be a lot of fuckery on that shit. There be a lot <laughs> of, they like, do be a lot like of fuckery. Cop, and I know, especially when y'all got academics on there, and y'all got, and y'all got, and y'all got, you know, Adam Twenty. Fuck it, man. Let me tell you, man. <laughs> Fuck Adam 22. I'm going to say it, right? Fuck Adam That's right. I'm going to say it. Gonna say it. <laughs> that right. man shitting on his peoples. And as a CEO, that made me so mad. That made me... No, I ain't even going to cap you guys. That made me so mad. The way he kept trying to offset the blame. Oh, it's the editor. Oh, it's this... Well, he did the house phone, man. I would have beat the fuck out of Adam Twenty Two, bro. If I was, if I, if all my shit was normal. So I'm glad you got away from there. I'm glad you starting your own thing. Let him troll. I know he's trying to troll. Oh, uh, they numbers, they numbers this. They yeah, but guess what? They own it all. Guess what? It's all coming back to them. Guess what? It's all their rules. Guess what? They don't got to work for an entitled little white boy. Ooh. Right. Look, Fuck. I, I respect it, bro. Y'all keep y'all keep doing y'all thing. Hey man, much man, love to you, God man. Bless God you, bless you, bro. Bro. To you. God I, bless I, you, bro. I, I, I thank you, bro. For real, and, for real. Um, hey, where 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 uh where is T Real there? No, T Real not here. T Real's at, yeah. at his house. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I'm a, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna link you. I'm gonna link you with bro tomorrow. All right, that's a bit, man. Link me, man. Uh. I actually linked up with Etai. You know Etai. Yeah, there. for sure. Bro, that man is the realest motherfucker on the planet, bro. He sent my he sent my little bro some Louis Vuitton jackets. Fire. He sent my whole family Louis Vuitton. He sent me Louis Vuitton goodies, like ladder covers to give out to my homies. Y'all got to get Etai on this motherfucker, bro. No, for, for sure, for sure. Get well, we, hey, bro, I'll do that for you, for sure, for sure. Tap me in All with right. Etai tomorrow. We'll have him on the show for sure. That's a big AD. And, and I'm and keep texting me, bro. Keep hitting me up and I, shit. I promise you I will, so, brother. You know, I, I I still should have it's only day three in the hospice, so I should have I should have maybe another seven days. Hey, bro. Least. I'm gonna hit you up every day, I promise you. All right, man. Y'all be safe and y'all y'all keep doing what y'all are doing, man. Like for real, keep doing what y'all are doing. Don't ever give up. Don't ever stop because I'm I learning from my regret. And you don't want no regret when you leave this world, bro. Bro, trust me, I'm about to get emotional on this motherfucker. No, you all you good, bro. You all good. You Do your don't thing. want no regret when you get into this bed. You don't want a regret. 
So stay and do what you want to do with who you want to do it with. And don't let nobody come in that's going to fuck shit up or screw with y'all shit. And y'all stay down with the team. When the money comes, y'all stay down, man. Y'all stay down. Y'all show people how it's done to get a big check and stay down and, and really and really divide that shit and, and, and you know what I mean? And really show the culture what it's about, bro. That's really what I want to see from you guys. Man, straight up, man. That's big. We're going to hold it okay. down, man. That means a lot, bro. I'll talk to you tomorrow, my uh, nigga. Respect, respect. All right, you guys be safe, man. You too, bro. I love, bro. My God. For sure. Um, yes, sir. Damn. <clears throat> Crazy. That's big. Man, you don't yeah. take don't take life for granted, y'all, man. For real, yeah. for reals, bro. Cause you never fucking know. 